Craig for using that word plethora so many times. <laughs> Our next speaker, John Register, has come to Toastmaster a plethora of times. And I think we who know John are excited to hear about what he has to say. How many negative reports did you hear about Rio de Janeiro? If you were thinking about going to the Olympic and Paralympic Games, would those negative news stories deter you from going? What would you have chosen if it was your job to go and you were given the choice by your employer to stay at home? Would you? Our speaker faced all these questions and more. His speech topic will be out of the storytelling manual, and his speech is entitled, Chasing the Coconut Man. Please welcome Pikes Peak Toastmaster John Register. <laughs> some of the negative storylines that you heard in the United States about Rio de Janeiro before the Olympic and the Paralympic Games? Just anyone throw some. Public Zika. transportation. Zika. Zika. <laughs> what was it? Public transportation. Public transportation. Water. Problem, yes. uh, Government Water collapsing. Poverty's collapsing. The bridge collapsing. Yes, was on that bridge. sewage in the lakes. Yeah. 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 The basketball team on our <laughs> that was a negative story. <laughs> Stadium not getting finished. Stadium not getting finished, yes. Yeah. Lodging's not being finished. The poverty gap. Yeah. Poverty gap, yes, yes. All those negative stories that came out. I was uh, happened to be down in Rio on September the 3rd, and in the evening time uh, with the United States Olympic Committee, right outside the JW Marriott, just across the street from the Copacabana Beach, <laughs> Down at the <laughs> We had seven BMW bicycles, and, a, and on this one occasion, I decided to take one of those BMW bicycles that was a, 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 um, a mountain bike and go for a short ride. So I asked the concierge, you know, where should I go? Where do you think my, the, the ride should take me? And, and I had some fears about this ride, so I wanted to make sure I was safe, just like you all said, the, the crime rate or the water quality and, and those things. And I was just a little bit uh, fearful of, about going out on, on my own this evening. And so he came up to me and he said, I, you, you can take the Copacabana, go across the, uh, the, the Fort Copa, and then you'll link to the Ipanema Beach and go all the way up. And when you get to the favela, which is kind of this, this, this little uh, area, um, what was another kind of high crime rate, they said, just turn around and come on back. And it was down there where you said where that bridge had collapsed. Uh, so I said, okay, I'll, I'll go off and do that. And off I got on my bicycle and I went down. And as I was going down the beach, there were all these little stands that were here that were selling these coconuts. And I was passing them all the way down as it was getting dark in the evening time. And as I was moving uh, the bicycle up toward the favela, uh, I turned around and came back, it was about 9.30 in the evening time, and the, and the sun was going down, so I decided to stop and get some coconut milk. Coconut. I never had it before. I wanted to taste and experience it. So I stopped at one of these stands and uh, got my money ready, and I was uh, straddling my bicycle, had my little helmet on, and as the, I, I, was, I was looking for the gentleman who was going to sell me the coconut, and I couldn't find him. So I was looking back behind the vending stand, and I looked on the other side, and I see him kind of sitting down and, and kind of talking with his, his buddies and friends, but, but not really paying too much attention to me, so I was kind of, hey, you know, can I, can I buy a coconut? And so he kind of looks at me, puts his head down, shrugs his shoulders, gets up and begins to walk in my direction, goes all the way around, passes in front of me, and stands in front now in front of the, the coconut vending stands, and he picks out a coconut, puts it down, puts his hand out for the money. I said, oh, okay, and I take my money out and I give him the little money that I had in my pocket for it, six, six rias, whatever the thing is. And so he gives him the coconut, he slices it open, and he hands it to me. I'm saying, okay, now how do I drink this milk? I guess it's on the inside of this. So I walk my bicycle over <laughs> to a table, and I'm straddling my bike because I don't want to steal it, and I'm trying to drink this coconut milk with the point down, with the dribbling down my shirt. And as I... <laughs> Finished my coconut, <coughs> I don't know what to do with the husk, because there's no trash can there. And 
So I go look for him again, and he is around the, the table, the, the sand, and he comes back around again because there's another person there trying to buy coconut. And this guy that's buying the coconut, after he exchanges money, he slices the coconut open, puts it down in front of him, gives him a straw. <laughs> so now I'm ticked. Because now I've recognized that the reason he didn't give me the straw is because I'm the guy from the north. And um, so I'm a little bit upset. And I give him the I finally give him the husk and off I go back to the um, to the hotel. Now, eight days later, I was with a group from Deloitte. And I was hosting them for the Paralympic Games to take them around to these different areas and, and venues and experience the Paralympic Games. And two of them wanted to go off on a bicycle ride. So I knew where to go, but they wanted to go around Lagoa and I said, well, let's go for a ride down the Copacabana because I knew that beach now. And this was our Ipanema Beach ride, one of the, the other guys taking the picture of us. And as we're going down this beach, we decided to go across what I call um, Angelina Jolie Boulevard. It's, it's Angelica something, but I see that's where I turn and go across the beach around the, the outside. And we get to, uh, on the ride about eight, nine miles in, we're thirsty, we stop, and I see on the other side of the Lagoa a coconut vendor. And as I get the bikes, I said, You guys want some coconut milk? They said, Oh, yeah, we go ch check one of our things off the list. And we take our bikes across the bicycle, bicycle path. And this little guy comes from behind the coconut stand, and he runs up to us, he gets our bicycles, and he takes them to his coconut cage. He stops in there, pulls out three chairs, sets them down for us, wipes them off, and says, sit, 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 sit. I said, oh, this is interesting. Nice ride. Sit down. It's cool. And then he brings, he goes over the coconut <laughs> cage, brings out three coconuts, and he presents them to us. Like, are these okay? Now, I'm not a coconut connoisseur. <laughs> but I say, yes, out of the plethora of coconuts that you have, these are okay. And I get this, uh, I get them, I get them, and he cuts them open, pops three straws and comes back around, sets them down before us, and we begin to drink the coconut milk. And now when I come back, and I look back, he has this little sign on his desk, on his vending's desk. And he is in the newspaper. He's like the guy. He's like the best coconut guy in all of the, this logo area. And so I said, I get on my camera and I take a picture of him and we do a video. And I said, how is it that you are the best coconut vending man in uh, the logo? He says, no, 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 Brazil. I said, oh. <laughs> he stopped and he, and he, and he um, so to, to kind of run through this, I said, that's amazing. So he, 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 I sit back down, and then he <laughs> does something with the coconuts. He slices it open after, after we're done with the milk. He scoops out the inside pulp, and then he puts it in the thirds that uh, are in the coconut for, for us. And off we go. Um, we, we, drink, we eat the pulp, and off we go back to the hotel. The concierge comes out and says, Mr. Rexer, how was the ride? I said, it was phenomenal. I met the best, best guy ever, the coconut guy. And he says, he's, I said, he's the best one in uh, all of uh, Brazil. He said, oh, Brazil, are you kidding me? So I showed him the picture that I took of this little guy <laughs> and his picture of Luciano Dos Santos. And he says, he is the best coconut man. Because all the guys from the north that come down here, they're always, they're always dumped upon by the folks in the, in the south because of who they are and where they, what they represent. But he always had the positive attitude. He says, nothing can stop me from delivering these coconuts or make me good or bad because all I have to do is it's, it's, it's the coconut that makes me good or bad. And I really think that we learn a lot from these two opposing stories about Rio. Rio was amazing. It was phenomenal. And I want to go back again. And all these news stories that came out that were negative, not one case of Zika did we ever hear about. Mm -hmm. The only negative story that we heard about was somebody that was really uh, urinating on their country that we heard in the, in the newspapers back here. They took advantage of the negative news stories to try to build themselves up. And I think what we're always trying to do is to chase that coconut man, to chase the positive things that come from folks like this and scenery like this because our fears that come from other people's fears paralyze us for living life in abundance. Mm -hmm.
So always chase the coconut man. <laughs> <laughs>